Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 23rd. First up, this one is from my friend 1954 Shadow Bob. This is from Dig, A Common Logic to Seeing Cats and Cosmos. This is actually talking about computers being able to recognize objects and recognize them better. And uh, I'll just read a little bit of the article here. This is pretty deep reading, too, if you want to... uh, really get into some geeky heavy reading which a lot of you I know are like me you're really super geeks as far as uh, some of these things so um, check this out if you get a chance now two physicists have shown that one form of deep learning works exactly like one of the most important and ubiquitous mathematical techniques in physics a procedure for calculating the large scale behavior of physical systems such as elementary particles fluids and the cosmos the new work completed by and I'll try to get these right these names Pankaj Mehta of the Boston University and David Schwab of Northwestern University demonstrates that a statistical technique called renormalization, which allows physicists to accurately describe systems without knowing the exact state of all their component parts, also enables the artificial neural networks to categorize data as, say, a cat, regardless of its color, shape, or posture in a given video. It's a pretty interesting article overall. One thing that they didn't talk enough about, at least in my mind, is I think, as I've read different papers on how a computer, artificial type of learning systems recognize an object, and uh, especially when it's in a contrasty environment or an environment with a lot of distractions, is they don't really talk so much directly, although there's some indirect uh, mention of it. They don't talk directly about the fact that I think we ignore so much information. You can... Uh, concentrate and see a cat walking in a room whereas you'd have people walking around other animals walking around things moving um, just all kinds of distractions and yet our neural network in our brain is able to totally just stay focused on that one object and I think that's a large part of what we have to solve before we get into neural networks artificial neural networks can that can do as well as human beings but I, I think it does kind of indirectly talk about that in a way too so if you get a chance to read it it's it's fair it's a fairly long article you have to scroll down quite a bit to catch the whole thing and I'm not going to tell you by any means that I understand every technique about it because they talk about different algorithms the natural algorithms that our brain uses versus ones that the scientists have come up with but I think you'll find it pretty interesting if you're into these kind of <clears throat> into these kind of papers and stuff. And next, this one was sent in from my friend Howard W. Thank you for sending this one in. This is from Wired. Ford makes backing up a trailer as easy as turning a knob. Uh, they've got a video with this too. You can scroll down and they do have a video of a guy actually backing up a, a trailer doing this. And what the system does, on uh, it's just available right now on Ford F-150 trucks, is what it does is it the truck itself takes over all of the steering, the braking, and the gas pedal. You Basically, the truck does everything on its own, and all you're required to do is take this little steering knob that goes, uh, it's just like a, a tuning knob and a radio, and you just turn it left if you want to steer the trailer left or right if you want to steer the trailer right, and that's all you're concentrating on is just one action, just steering the trailer. Now, there's about a 10-minute learning curve, they say, for each trailer that you have, and then there's this little black and white sticker you have to... Uh, put on the trailer so that the camera that's um, operating the controls for the truck knows where the trailer is at all times and can make allowances uh, for the maneuvers it has to do to be able to do this. But it's pretty interesting. It's just a very short video. The video isn't even one minute long, so if you get a chance, check that out. But I think for a lot of people that don't have a lot of practice in trailers, um, this could be a a pretty good aid in, in backing up with trailers. I know I get rusty with it, too. I've got my little utility trailer, but if I haven't used it in a long time and then I have to back it into my long driveway, it takes a little bit of a relearning curve there if you're not doing it on a constant basis. And this next one is from Engadget, and this was sent in by Matt and uh, Matt F. and Catherine S., both... Uh, uh, Posted, in fact, Catherine has posted this one in the Dumpster Divers uh, webpage, or not webpage, but their uh, Facebook group. So thank you guys for uh, bringing this to my attention. Bionic Eye Implant Promises a Lifetime of Perfect Vision. Now this is a very, very short article because I think this is just 
in the beginning stages of development, but an optometrist in British Columbia claims to have invented an easily implantable device that provides a square with vision three times better than 2020, dubbed the Occumetrics Bionic Lens by its inventor, Dr. Garth Webb. I would kind of think that that's not true, that three times better than 2020. I think what they probably mean, unless this is some kind of small binoculars or something, they're probably meaning three lines below 2020. I know a lot of people can read one line below 2020 fairly easy. I'm, when I was younger, I could actually read one line below the 2020 chart. Not anymore by any by any stretch of the imagination, but I think that's what, probably what they're talking about. That's, But nobody's actually, it's, it's still not in human tests, obviously, what they're going to do right now. He did a presentation um, about this before the Latin American Society of Contact and Refractive Surgeons. So what is going to happen right now is they're going to have their first trial on animals before moving on to blind human trials. If all goes according to plan, the lenses could receive regulatory approval in Canada by 2017. So that's kind of cool. As somebody that's actually, they talk about how they, um, in an eight-minute procedure, they can just insert the lens into your eye and then it unfolds and uh, uncurls and then it becomes, you know, just a replacement for your regular lens. As somebody that has undergone cataract surgery, which I did just a year and a half ago, um, I've, I actually got a chance to see it happen. I was fully awake and I actually saw the lens go in and it was kind of like tube shaped and I saw it unfold and move itself into place. It was, it was kind of a cool thing to see. No pain involved either. So if, uh, if you ever are in doubt about getting cataract surgery, uh, don't think anything of it because it's very easy to deal with especially if you have very good doctors. And this last one, this is um, just something that came to my attention. It's actually a dead Kickstarter project that died exactly a year ago in May, and it's called The Outrunner. But I thought this was just too cool to not at least give a mention to. And what happened a year ago on their Kickstarter project is they needed $150,000 to get this up and running. And unfortunately, by the time their, uh, the end of their goal was... Uh, over, they only re, re, um, had reached $62,000 approximately, so they didn't even quite reach the halfway point. But still, that's pretty uh, phenomenal. And I want I want you to check out a little bit of this video because this robot is just kind of cool. It's a hybrid between a wheeled robot and a legged robot. Now, it's considered technically a legged robot and actually set a world record for speed for a legged robot. To me, it just so much reminds me of those hunter-killer robots on Star Wars um, the last three episodes where they talked about them, and I don't know, it is just so different than the other kind of stuff that I saw that I was kind of hoping that it would still have a possibility. They have not shut down their web page yet, but as far as any activity, I've tried searches and everything like that, and there's just, in this last year, there's zero of anything published, any activity or anything that I can find, but I'm still hoping against hope that something can come out from this because it's just, uh, if nothing, the cool factor. And if they could get the price down to where, you know, it uh, it would be something that people would want to buy, they'd have to keep probably the price within the $400 or $399.95 it seems, like seems to be the price point. If they could actually sometime in the future develop this and sell it for that price or a little bit less, that would be kind of cool. So anyway, um, first off, before I close the show off, I want to give a shout out to a really good show. And I'm going to put this as the very first link on the top. That's in the lawn. That's a weekly show that my friend Mike Muzzle Mike does, and uh, check out his show. He does it on a uh, not quite as regular a basis. It's not exactly every week. It's um, sometimes every week, and then sometimes just when he gets around to doing it. Uh, but still, uh, I like people doing a regular show on at least a weekly basis or a semi-regular basis. So if you get a chance to check out his show too, it's just that his show is more of a variety. It's a variety of everything from. Um, subjects that just pop into his head to reviews on gear to everything else and he's a fellow biker too and a friend of mine so if you get a chance to check out his show so anyway that's about it for this week everybody take care i will catch you next week <laughs>